up top here you can see that they, they have like a it's kind of like breadcrumbs it shows your where you're at in your scene right now I'm in an isolated view of my drawing object you can see where it says drawing object right now if I want to get back to my scene I just click on the scene scene one um, that's it's key to note because uh, we're going to be getting into symbols soon and when you're working in symbols you you want to work just on that one symbol you double click on it that you're going to be in your symbol view um, so it, it, it's, it can be easy to be confused on where you're at in your scene you might be thinking you're working on the rest of the rest of your project and you're really only working in your um, in your symbol view so you get to you get to make sure you're you're kind of in the working in the right place and we'll get in that into that in a minute um, so back to back to the scene here with our with our um, drawing object so if basically if I click another drawing object on top um, now I can move them around I can overlap them and it doesn't delete from that object because it because it's a drawing object um, there's a couple paintbrush tools so you have you have a a line tool, you have a pencil tool, paintbrush tool. It works works similar to uh, what you would expect. Um, under the paintbrush tool, there's an interesting tool called spray brush tool, and this allows you to take a symbol and basically spray a symbol across the sc across the screen. By default, it's kind of like this uh, dot pattern, but you can actually change it to symbols, and we'll we'll talk about symbols in a little bit. Um, and there's also one called the Art Deco tool, or actually it's just a Deco tool. And this is basically the same thing, um, except for it's more of a, it's more patterned. Um, they have some some effects by default that you can have. There's a vine and a grid um, pattern where it creates this like flowery vine thing. Um, I don't know why you want that, but you might. But you you can actually use your own symbols if you if you create your own pattern and you basically uh, can map your own your own pattern to this, which could be useful. Uh, and we're gonna actually do that in a second. So we're gonna um, actually I'm just gonna jump to that. This uh, let me show you an example of what we're gonna create here. So this is what we're going to make, <laughs> just a simple animation. Um, when you're working in Flash, um, you have your FLA file, that's your actually working file. But what you're going to actually produce is a SWIFT file, it's a SWF file. Um, your, your FLA file is basically like a PSD file, that's your layered working file. So what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to just use the oval tool here. Actually, we'll use the oval primitive tool. The oval tool just makes a makes a standard oval. With the oval primitive tool, uh, we have a few more options to it. You have a uh, you have your stroke and style and all that, but you have this option to you can basically cut it open. And you have start angles and you have inner radius and stuff like that, uh, which we're going to use in a minute. But for now, we're going to just make it like a dark gray. We'll put a white stroke on it. Okay, you can control our stroke size here in the properties window. Maybe we'll transform it, make it a little bit smaller. There's a little node in there. It looks like I clicked on it. Basically, it, it changed the start angle there. Um, so these are going to be my little pellets for my Pac-Man an animation. Uh, so basically, I create my shape. I'm going to go under Modify, Convert to Symbol. And there's several different options here. Um, actually, I'm going to go to Advanced, but. A lot of this you, you don't, we're not going to really talk about right now. Um, but one thing we're going to talk about is that the type, there's 
three different types of symbols, a movie clip, a button, and a graphic. Um, a movie clip um, you're going to want to use if you plan on doing any action scripting to the object and you, it basically allows the most flexibility uh, for your symbol to um, animate it and to um, add scripting to it. Uh, your button works just like a button. You have, if, if you make a button clip it, um, or a button symbol, it basically gives you different states. You have rollover effects and things like that. Um, and then you have a graphic symbol. A graphic symbol is kind of a, it's just a, the most basic of a symbol. You can, you, can, um, you can have animation in it, but you don't have as much um, interactivity or functionality as you do with a movie clip. Um, so we're gonna we're just gonna make this a movie clip. Even actually, in this case, we can make it a graphic clip clip because we're not gonna do much to it. Um, you have registration, and then basically, um, right now, we're, that doesn't really matter where the registration is. But when you, when you're scripting, it's all based on like coordinates of 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 the symbol and like where the where the registration point is. And when you move it, you can move it, you know, 30 pixels this way or, you know, rotate it or whatever, and it's all based on your registration. Um, by default, it's in the upper left. Uh, it really depends on what your intent is and um, what you need it to do. Right now, that's that's fine. Um, but just, if, if you're, if you start rotating or animating it or doing something with it, it's not having quite the effect that you want. It's not quite animating the way you want. It, it might be because of the registration, so you just need to be aware of where that's at, and that you can't you can't adjust it. So uh, we're just gonna leave it right there. We're gonna call this um, dot. And we'll call it a dot underscore, and we'll call it a GC for graphic clip, so I can I know what that is. Okay. So now if we go look at our library, we see that it shows up in our library. That's our dot graphic clip and now I can um, delete it off the stage and we still we still have it here so this is the actual symbol and um, when I drag it onto the stage it, that's an instance of that symbol so I can I can drag it off you know make multiple copies and basically what it's doing is um, it, we're not increasing the file size by using symbols you basically create one object and you can repeat it multiple times in, without increasing the actual size of, or weight of your file. Um, and that's basically the whole benefit of having, having symbols. Also, if you need to edit the symbol, you just, you just edit the symbol and it will update all the instances of the symbol. Okay, so right now we don't, we're going to remove that. And right, we're going to use the um, the deco tool here. I'll go back to my properties. Then we're going to use the symmetry brush. And we're going to do a grid translation. Move this over. And now I can, now that I have a symbol, I can actually pick, um, I can choose my symbol here. I'll just go to edit and we'll choose uh, the dot underscore GC. Ah, well, there we go. How'd you get that? I, I yeah. clicked on the plus here and oh, dragged yeah. it out. So it looks like, okay. <clears throat> All right. You can basically angle it, you know, different angles. You can change the spread and how close they are. I want them somewhat close. And we'll drag this out to make more of them. And I don't want them so close together, so we'll increase this, the spread, the vertical spread on it. And I basically only want one line, so I'm going to drag that down. So you could fill like, like have a huge page and fill like the whole page up if you wanted to, depending on how tall your grid is. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. And you can use any any symbol to fill it up, right. so you can create your own. Pattern. pattern and you know okay. and fill it up and the great thing about it is it's is based on one symbol